Clam it in the busy street. We are here to tell someone that Jesus Christ is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Let me take the time to greet our pastor, Lady Williams. Praise God, your precious saints. Praise God, the mothers of Zion. Amen. And you mothers today, we are in Mother's Day today. Greet you well in the name of the Lord. You are here today to worship the King of Kings. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise, let me hear you praise the Lord. Let me hear you call that name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Our team said today embrace him. Amen, the call. Embracing God call. Praise the name of the Lord. We are here to embrace one another today. If we have the call of God upon us today, we are here for one purpose. is to tell somebody that Jesus loves you. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Turn from hymnal in 62. God abiding peace is in our soul today. Praise the name of the Lord. God abiding peace is in my soul. Yes, I feel.
love the Lord. At this time, we love the reading by Brother Sean Dale. Praise God. Praise the Lord, everybody. Can we all stand? Today's reading will be taken from Proverbs 31, and we'll be reading from verses 1 to the end, and I'll read while you follow. So that's Proverbs 31. The words of King Lemuel, the prophet, the words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him, what my son, and what my son of my whom, and what the son of my vows. Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to which destroy kings. It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink. Lest they drink, and forget the law, and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, and wine unto those be of heavy hearts. Let him drink, and forget his poverty. And remember his misery no more. Open thy mouth, for the dumb in the cause of all such are appointed to destruction. Open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flux, and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ship. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to the household, and a portion to her maidens. She considered a field, and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands, she planted a vineyard. She girded her loins and strength, and with strength, and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good, her candles go it out, not out by night. She laid her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. She stretcheth out her hands to the poor, yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself covering of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh finding in and selleth it and delivereth girdles unto the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She opened her mouth with wisdom. In her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up, and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praise her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but not excel excellest them all. But thou excellest them all, sorry. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Praise the Lord. Praise him again. Praise him again. Hallelujah. When peace like a reed I
Hallelujah. 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 Well, mighty long way, Lord. Mighty
of Almighty God to worship his wonderful name and so far I'm feeling good in my spirit surely the presence of the Lord is in this place I can feel the mighty power I can feel the brush of angels wings and I see glory on each face thank God I'm in the presence of Almighty God today to worship him let me welcome you to church let me welcome you to Grace and Truth Tabernacle Spiritual Center for Life. A family church, let me welcome all our visitors. And I'm looking at some faces I haven't seen in decades. But it's good to have you in church today, worshiping the Lord. Amen. Really delighted to have all of you today, worshiping the Lord, the Grace and Truth family, and the departmental leaders. Amen. Our visitors. And um, let me pause to say happy, happy, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers that are in the room. Amen. It's your day and you should be screaming on top of your lungs. You have done a phenomenal job to raise your children to wear their hats. Amen. And don't think for one minute you have failed. Amen. The job you have done is a good job. Amen? So I don't want any mother in the room today to be, to be wallowing in self-pity. You have done a wonderful job. And I'll tell you more about it as I go in my message. Amen? If you have done a good job, you have done a good job. Amen? God is a wonderful friend to have and I know today is one of those days that persons have a lot of stuff to do amen so as I minister to you I am conscious of the fact amen today is Mother's Day amen and today you should be spoiled amen Amen. Amen. And as I look at all the mothers in the room, you're looking wonderfully good. Amen. Amen. And for everybody, you're looking splendid. Amen. Today's your day. But I want to share with you from the word of Almighty God. From the book of Ephesians chapter 1, I'll read maybe one or two verses. And then I start troubling you. Amen. I, I want every child in this room to give me both of their ears today. 
because I'm going to speak to you as I speak to your mother. Amen? Amen? Those mothers who are enjoying your Mother's Day so far, can I see by the raise of your hands? Hallelujah. It's good that you are a mother. And for those soon to be mothers, hurry up and come. I did not call any name. I just make a statement. Amen. 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 You get the message, Sister Max? All right. <laughs> the book of Ephesians, chapter 1. I go read a bit, maybe about one or two verses of the chapter. Ephesians chapter 6. Pardon me, Brethren. I'm so excited about today. <laughs> you would not believe. <laughs> you know, I walk inside this room this morning and I said to a saint, Happy Mother's Day, and she said, Same to you. <laughs> and I'm still enjoying it. <laughs> God is a good God. <laughs> He's a wonderful friend to have. Amen. Amen. Can we look at Ephesians chapter 6? You know I'm enjoying it, right? Children, obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with thee and thou mayst live long on the hurt. We don't hear that very often. Amen. Wonderful Jesus, we thank you for these words, their life, their power. And God, as we are about, to, I'm about to speak to the hearts and mind of your people, God, today is such a special day. God, I pray that you will speak into my heart, speak into my mind. And God, as I speak to the mothers of this room, I pray, God, that we leave here, the children will leave here, and those under the sound of my voice, even in so on social media, whatever platform there is, God, I pray you will anoint their ears as they listen. Uh, God, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated, and thank you for standing. God is a good God. Amen. And there is none like unto him. When you think of a mother, there is so many things that will come to mind when you think of a mother. Amen? Amen. Many persons and many of our children will not understand, and as you grow older, you will understand the importance of your mother. Amen? And maybe before I get there, I must ask to say, as we sit in this room, you know, in life, many persons are many children wish if they could be born in another family. And I, I dare not ask a question. But... There are many children who believe that if I was born in another, another family, my life would be better off. Amen? And some wish if they were born in another family. But if I have it to do all over again, I would be born in my family. Nothing is wrong with my family. Shirley Caesar said she packed her lunch in a whole greasy bag. She didn't have much, but it was more than others have. You would not understand as a child that the family that you were born in was ordained for you to be born in that family. Some of you would not understand that you are privileged to be alive. 
Amen? Amen. If you listened to the news last week, you would have understand that a mother in Vineyard Town gave birth to a baby. And as soon as she popped the umbilical cord from her, with all the whatever that comes with the baby, the birthright, she used a scandal bag and put the baby plus birthright and everything and hung it on somebody's fence and left the child there. And a man was passing by and hear the child in the bag and take the bag, call the police and save the child. I want every child in this room to understand you could be put in a scandal bag and hung on a fence. But all because of the love of your mother, you're sitting here. Amen. You could be aborted. Because when your mother find out that she's pregnant, some of us call it unwanted pregnancy. And God knows that some of our mothers who get pregnant did not plan to get pregnant with you. I'm in the church, man. Let me have church, man. And because you did not plan to get pregnant with the child, the time you get pregnant with the child, you could have said, call it an unwanted pregnancy and you, deter, you, 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 you get rid of it. Right? You know how to do it. I'm troubling you. But you would get rid of it. And then you would go on your merry way. I don't have no picnic to bother me. Whenever I'm ready, I get it. Children, your mother could have gotten rid of you. But... She sometimes bear the embarrassment to bring you here. And sometimes the embarrassment of the male family. Can I talk to you? Because sometimes when you get pregnant for a particular man, you have a daddy not available scenario to deal with. A DNA. Why do you think they call it so? It means daddy is not available. And sometimes you have to suffer the embarrassment of your baby father, mother, and sisters, and brothers to see, and I'm a brother one, and I'm a son one. And when you do daddy not available, he comes available. But anyway, after suffering all this embarrassment, you still allow the child to be born. Children, love your mother. Kiss up your mother. Huh? My mother is 85. Huh? And when I go to her, room or see her sitting down sometime and I go and put my head in her lap. The first thing say, all right, I don't know if you're good or not. You don't feel any pain? <laughs> because that part of your mother is always there. And let me help you to understand a little thing about mother. If you define motherhood, you're looking at somebody who is protective, progressive, mm? attentive, at, attentive. Mm? Mm? This person as a mother is somebody that will love you unconditionally. That's like God. Huh? 
Huh? The affection that she has for you, nobody else has it. And because of that, you will find that mothers, from your born till you are dead, your mother will be always overprotective of you. You could be married and become old like Methuselah. As long as your mother is around, you are your mother's baby. And your mother will talk to you in ways nobody else can. And she will try to rough you up sometime because that is just your mother. She don't see you as an adult, she sees you as a child. And for all she cares, you never grow big. So sometime you will have your mother children and your mother will speak to you in a particular way and you ruffle your feathers and that may have big smut now. No, your mother don't see you as any adult. She see you as somebody need to be protected. But many times our children, your children become upset with you and will treat you a particular way and they don't understand that all you're doing, you're working for their good. I could go back to the family in which you were born. You don't have to worry about where you were born. If you're born into a poor family and you're still living using a pit latrine, your mother still loves you and she has done her best. You're lucky to provide a latrine and you're not using scandal bags. That's your mother. Sometime as we grow older, we realize that the choices of mother made as individuals would not be the choices that we would necessarily make. But as she seeks to guide us, she's doing the best she knows how. I read from the book of Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 1. And it says, children, obey your parents in love. For this is right unto your mother and father, that your days may be long upon the hurt. And no child should live with any animosity in your heart against your mother. Because it means that your days are short. When you think you have it all pampered and pat and wearing to go, that's when your days are going to cut short. The story that comes to my mind as I read and I go through the scripture is the story of Abraham and Sarah and Hagar. We know how Abraham married to his wife, Sarah, and for years, she could not become pregnant. Sarah and um, Agar start working with them for over 10 years. And when Sarah looked at how the helper was good around the house, and she realized that she could not give any birth any birth to any child she went into her husband and she said to her husband i'm gonna bring my maid in to you that you can pregnant her and have children with her say a god did not have any control over that you see your life was funny in those days yes so Sarah called to Agar and said, you know what? I want you to work for me tonight. I want you to go into my husband and he's going to pregnant you and you're going to have baby. Yes, ma'am. I work your day now. Remember, I work your day. Wow. 
So Agar, when the night comes, she get a nice bath and she put on all the little intricacies and she went in to Abraham. And Abraham give her a baby. Now that the woman come out and realize that she's pregnant, she look at her mistress and say, but you know who nothing because me you are your wife and me a helper and look at me. That's what happened when helper get wifey status. Like the show. So here is Agar despising his, her, 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 her master wife because know that I, I, I have access to your husband. You should not be in that position. But what she don't understand that she was, she was pulled into a, into a position whether she like it, yes or no. It's not because Abraham loved her. So the word of God says, when Sarah realized that she had done wrong, and this woman was looking at her in an inhuman way, she went to her husband and said, listen, it's my wrong. I'm going to take the wrong. Because I should not have allowed my helper to have a child for you. The husband turned and said to her, you are the boss. Do with her as you please. And you know, ladies not really have so much sympathy with ladies like that, you know. You know that ladies rough with ladies? You, want, you know why though? <laughs> Ladies are very rough with each other. When a man would sympathize, the woman ain't sympathizing with the woman. Why? So they will tell you. As the man think on one side of his brain, he will just think as he sees it and he would sympathize. But the woman know what the other woman thinks. So they become hostile towards each other. So here is Sarah getting mad at Hagar. And Hagar ran away from the house and ran into the desert. And she was in the desert with pregnant with a child. And she was crying. How many persons, how many mothers have gone through pregnancy with teary eyes? Sometimes you wish you could jump off a cliff and get rid of the baby because things now work out. And while she was there crying for help and crying, the Lord sent an angel to her and said to her, why are you here crying? And she said, my mom, my master's wife treating me bad. The angel said, I see your look. I understand where you're taking this. You're taking this to another level. Go home and obey your master wife and humble yourself. With that... Hagar turned around and she went back home. She apologized to Sarah. And after apologizing, she was taken back into the house. The Lord told Hagar, the son that uh, you are going to have, his name will be called Ishmael. I'm going to bless him. He's going to be a blessing. And right after that, the Lord showed up to Sarah to say to Sarah, you're going to get pregnant. You see, you see, sometimes, don't run ahead, God, you know. You're going to get pregnant. 
You're going to have a son. And the son's name will be called Isaac. She got pregnant. She had Isaac. And I'm running this burden for you to understand quickly. Isaac was born. And the word of God says after Isaac was born and they start growing, you know you have two families sitting around the dinner table. You have the wife and her son and you have the matey and her son. And the word of God says while they were having dinner, Sarah looked over and saw Ishmael. Remember they are two brothers, you know. Making monkey face at his brother. Maybe you're ugly. And meanwhile, my son, he starts making monkey face. Sarah just get up and say to Abraham, get the band woman and his child out of my house. God Almighty. Remember, no, yeah, you got a you know, problem now, you know, man. A two pitney problem. The father was so grief because he was saying, both children are mine. And if you get up and say, get rid of that one, it's still my own. It's hard. But it happened. And it still happened today. grace and truth it still happened today you will take up a woman out the road with five pitney and bring them home and you have three and for your three can go the yard liar truth because you don't want to see your tree but she would accept that you take care of her five So the spirit of Sarah still lingers. Lord help me today. You have a bike helmet outside? I put it on my head. It happens today. Where the love for each other children does not exist. But all for your own. So Sarah trust out Agar and the Lord came to, to Abraham and said, let the woman go with her child. Don't grieve for them. And you watch as Abraham came in and he took up a jar of water. And he took up some bread and he packed it in a bag. And he gave it to Hagar and said, go. And Hagar, Hagar took her son, Ishmael, and started walking out in the desert, not knowing where she, what she's going. I'm talking about the love of a mother. The thing about it, the mother can't dis disown her child. When the man will turn his back, the mother can't. Ladies, you're good. Pat yourself on the shoulder. You have done a wonderful job. And many times our children are very ungrateful because you ever hear the talk about single parenting? You grow your child from, from scratch to nothing. And if it, if it had a father in dead like Auntie Paul. And as soon as the child go to hear, the child said, I want to know my father. I want me to find my father. And, and when she or, he or she finds their father, they forget all that the mother have done for them. And they love that man unconditionally. A man will never business if them dead or alive. Can I talk to you? 
Children, you have to understand the love your mother has for you. She hungry sometimes, but she still pop out the titty and push it in your mouth and hope that gas no kill you. Mothers, you know sometimes you are the one, sit down with your children and tell them the whole story. It wasn't easy, but I raised you from nothing. I did the best I could do. If you wanted to born in a rich family, I can't help you. Because your daddy came along and he donated something to me and I had to carry it. So here is Hagar walking out into the desert with nothing. And she started giving the boy some water. She started giving him a little bread. And as they walk, little water, little bread. And as they walk, the water finish, the bread finish. And the Ishmael start to cry for hunger. You can imagine. Baby start ball, no food for heat, no water, and they're in a dry place. And all she did was to walk with the child and look for a little shady and put the child underneath the shade and walk away and said, I don't want to see when you, di when you die. She hid herself and she was crying. God, if you could just send help for my little Ishmael. I don't even care much about me, but I care for my baby. That's a love of a mother. Even if I could get something for him, I don't even mind me. Me can't dead. But save him, Lord. And while she was crying, the Lord sent her an angel and said, why are you crying? She said, listen, my child, that's my priority. Doesn't have anything to eat. It's not about me, but my baby. Children, you know what your parents have to go through. Sometimes they go to work and all the boss talk to them and they still have to sup it up like so they're hearing good news just to make certain you are comfortable where you at. And then you don't even have respect and manners to them and you belittle them and things to them and nothing. You know how many mothers have to take up an helper job? And go go wash people dirty clothes. And get with your finger. Just for saying you go to school. And when you... I remember, I remember this, this gentleman in my community. He had this boy. And he would farm when you see the little man. The man moved cold left, right and center. And farm brother V. And I remember the, the man was walking, coming from the clinic. Down by Lawrence Tavern. And he was passing the pharmacy. And somebody shout out to the young lad and said, See your father there, go over, sir. And when the man look and see father and say, I know for me, Papa, that. A shame on me. He disowned his father because his father don't look like the other rest of fathers. And many persons, you my children, don't think because your mother is not in certain category, you should not uh, respect her for who she is. Oh, you think you reach that category if she never sacrificed to get you there. My children understand it all too well. The sacrifice their mother make for them to go to school and, and myself, the sacrifice and they leave school and university and they don't owe any student loan. Sacrifice. You could have put that money in a bank book and say, go borrow people money 
I want to do not pay it back. But making the sacrifice. And if your mother couldn't afford it and you have student loan, thank God for sending you to primary school and high school that you can have a loan that you can pay. Can I tell you how it song, brethren? Children, wake up! You have good parents! And the Bible says after the woman start crying, brethren, she start crying. The angel opened her eyes and when she looked, she see a place with water flowing. And she ran to get the water for her son and to keep him alive. Hey, mothers, you are special. I know about my mother. My mother, my mother worked tooth and nail to keep us going on other people, children. Sister Myers would have known. Sister Myers, when you don't Princess Street and your load set out over the sidewalk, right, Sister Wishart? And no rain is falling, but you hear people say, move because the rain falling crossroad and it don't fall downtown. If you don't move for all of the people, them load where you have wash we gone down the gully. I'm glad I was born in a family who helped me to understand my parents was not rich. But you know what happened? They showed me the part of life and I'm excited about it, even to love God. Amen. What more you want? If your father, your mother, your mother bring you to church, take you to Sunday school, and you're here, and you're baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. You want more life more than that? Go walk and help yourself. I help your mother. Amen. Take your mother out of poverty. Take her out of the pit latrin. Take her out of what she you not belong to her. I help her. Amen. I did not come and see my parents with all the amenities. Eh? But you know what happened? As soon as I can afford to do so, take them out. I. Love your mother. Respect your mother. Don't talk back to your mother. What if you were in a scandal bag? End up in, a, in an orphanage. People treat you, abuse. People rape you. All kind of things happen to you. You'll be there in an orphanage crying. I wish I could know my mother. And God helped some of us to, look, to know our mother. And if our mother said, wash up the plate, we sweet eat. But mother, remember, keep a pudding pan in the kitchen. As soon as they start talking back, you broadside them with it. Love your mother, respect your mother, share with your mother. It was yesterday I was saying to Sister Williams, my mother always tell me, and I always listen to the parable, kill mumma, give pitney mumma, can eat him. But if you kill pitney, give mumma, pitney, eat him up. Or mumma, give pitney, pitney, eat him up. If you go out and go a burger, Carry a piece of chicken, go give your mother. That's right. You can't go a burger now, so you know if you carry nothing, go give mama. And you rather share it with stranger. And when you go home, you're looking at your mother's face. Can I tell you something? Give her peace, go give your mother. Eat me for one leg, bite her piece, and give her peace. Are you mad at that? Care home something go give your mother, man. You know it's sweet to care home something go give your mother and see your mother eat peace and you eat peace. Sit down beside her. 
you feel accomplished. But some children, they mean, 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 they mean. And then just hard for themselves. Look at the sacrifice that was made for you. Can we look at it, brethren? Huh? Look at the sacrifice Agar made for Ishmael. We can look at it again. The king, the Pharaoh said, listen, too much Israelite has been born in this country. And we need to get rid of all the boys and the two-year-old. And this mother of a little boy named Moses. And the Bible says she plaits straw. And she make a basket. She pitch it in. And she pitch it out. And she decide to run the race. She say, my Moses is not dead. I'd rather they hang me. And she put him on the river Nile. And start hiding a bush. Send him brother them to hide in a bush. And watch him float down the river. And at the end of the day, she become his nanny. Because she loved the boy. She care about him. She can't afford to lose him. That's a mother's love. The word of God says. This woman could not have any child. And the Lord spoke to her husband. And she had a child by the name of Samson. Samson grew to become a big man. To the point where he wants to get married. And when he decides to get married, as soon as he start talking to the woman, he came home and said to his mother, me see a little girl that me want to talk to. The moment Shandane start talking to you, I knew. Because he said, daddy, X, Z, Y, Z. If he don't come up front to daddy, he will send daddy a text. And he sent mommy a text. And said, we can have this discussion further. Because your parent must know where you're going. And they would help to give you guidance as you go. All right. When you observe, if you say to your child, don't go over there, it not looks so wonderful. And, and the, the funniest thing about it, the woman, my perception of my son's choosing a spouse. Don't look for the one them too high. Because a problem you are bringing. Are your house? Because those are high cost of living with nothing because you have some ladies come from nothing and nowhere you shame for all of them yard when you are proposed to them and at them come and before them reach your house they want to wash a dryer um, plate washer they want everything to pack up high in the house and they want to live up a beverly hills and your pay can't reach up there so so leave those things alone Your, your mother will be able to give you all of those directives. So Samson, when he went down to Timna and saw Delilah, came home with the news and said, Mommy, I see a girl, the girl, nice. Where you see that girl? Down at Timna, she's a Philistine. Mama said, don't mix with her. If your mother said, don't mix, don't mix. Many of you young people, when, if you're going to start a relationship, the first person who's going to know you start a relationship is your friend. And you know who giving you directions? Your friend. And when, you, when you're married now, your friend give you direction, and before you know it, you're married, mash up. And when you're ready, you're married, mash up. You're going back home to mama. Run them. Your mother should be a part of your, 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 everything you do. Your mother should know, help you to make your relationship. You have been there and done that already. So you're supposed to be able to guide your children them through it. 
That's a love of a mother. Huh? You think, you think you, my mother didn't help me? How do I know that the first time I went on a date with a young lady, and I tell you this already, Oh, you think I know? The first time I went on a date with a young lady and I care I go KFC and buy three pieces of chicken fear fi and three pieces for me. And she sit down and eat fear three pieces. And before me start eating for me, she said, give me fear, you can look like you know I eat it. I hand her the box and that was the last of me. I know that I should walk away. That's a red flag. It's good to have parents that will guide you in your decision making process. Worship so your mother. So when you bring home that little girl you're talking to, I show mama, mama can't just look on her on the phone these days and look right to her. I look on the little boy and from your sister, mama, from your sister, him pants a drop off. If he can't buy a belt, leave me that alone. to love your mother and everything let me tell you something you should have a relationship with your mother second to none yeah. I have quarter dozen or four of them now four now and they are growing you soon see me get one next moment you just give me time Understand this. Your family should be so close-knitted that your she, you should be so close-knitted to your mother that you come and you discuss anything and everything. Your mother should be your best friend. But you know, as I grew up, I know I noticed something, and I'm I'm gonna stop. I noticed something about young girls, and I share it with you. As soon as your daughter start reaching where they start doing, and you have to send them to the shop to buy, they become out of line until they buck their toe, them come back humble. And I said in this church, and I told mothers in this church, never you as a mother, your daughter need a pad. And you said, me have two in a room, go take out one. Say, now go buy one at the shop for yourself. You and your daughter are not supposed to be wearing the same pad out of the same pack. All right, let me tell you how it go. The moment that start happen, she become unruly sometimes. Lord of mercy, welcome to grace and truth. You have to know where to draw the line. And sometimes all of what you do, your child don't appreciate it. And the woman said to her son, leave the woman there alone. Leave the woman. Do man no good for you. Choose of your own kind. 
And Samson still gone down the gone fool around David Lila. She looked pleasing to me. Sometimes your mother tell you, leave some relationship, leave some things, and leave some things, and you're still a runner going there. And when you buck your toe, you, you come lap your tail, and, and I fall up, and I come and I run and I eat mama harm. And if mama talk to you, still I cuss out mama, because you know why mama talk to you. But you know, some of, some of you as mothers, you know, you, you need to understand Tell your picnic as it is and left them alone. Worse, if you did a guide them, make them be your suffering. Because if you take them under your tail back too quick, them can come and disrespect you. You want to hear the truth? Left them out in the cold. Make them feel the temperature. But as a mother, you'll be too sympathetic. And they will never learn. Let me run on. Samson was left out there. You ever hear any story say, when them catch him down at the Philistine and, and pluck out him high and lock him up, his mother and father, they run gone down, they go and see if them bail him out. We know you hear no story about that. The man was in prison. Until the time they want to make havoc of him, they took him out. And he learned his lesson to the point he could not go back home to his family. He said, let me die with the Philistines. I disobey my parents and I don't deserve to live. I close with this one. Jesus... The savior of the world was born to a woman by the name of Mary. And after his birth, Herod wanted to kill all the newborn babes because he was, a, he was cared for another king to be born. And the word of God says Mary got up with Jesus and ran to Egypt, traveling by day. Travel by night and go to Egypt and hide him there. What a love. And when the time was right, she brought him back to Nazareth. And they settled there. But let me understand, let me I help you to understand. Gee, it was time for him to be crucified. And even when he was hanging on the cross. His mother was down below the cross looking up at him and he said, woman, behold thy son. Mama, I'm going to die, but I'm dying for the whole world. And he said, mama, after my death, go to Jerusalem and tarry because I'm going to come back and I'm going to dwell with you, mama. So when Mary left the cross that day, it wasn't all doom and gloom for Mary. Because Mary said, listen, I'm going to Jerusalem. And I'm going to go in a upper room. And I'm going to stay there. Because my son said, I will be endured with power from an eye. So she went into the upper room. And she tarried there. And when the Holy Ghost was being poured out, Mary could see Mary speaking in tongues and magnifying the great God of heaven. Ah, oh, God Almighty, if Mary had to speak in tongues, you cannot sit here and go to heaven without speaking in tongues. A good child, bless your mother. Jesus never sent everybody up there, my son, and not send Mary. If me go bless anybody, may I bless my mother? I wonder if she first get it. If I'm going to bless anybody else, bless your mother. Children, 
some of you need to go home and apologize this evening. If you have anger put your mother, go and go talk to your mother and tell your mother, say, listen, man, I've done foolishly. You are the best mother me ever know. No matter what she do with you. And the best mother you'll ever have. You can't change her. She made many sacrifices for you. You can imagine if your mother did kill you all when you are one or two, just push you off of the bed. Some of you young, you don't even have the picnic. You think it's easy to get up night and day picking this and nah, 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 it's a ball and you don't know where my ball about. You think it's easy? You feed him in my bar. You shake him in my bar. You rub up officer. You put him on my shoulder in my bar. You only cross his in my bar. What you want to do? But yet still you have to find some ways and means. And wonder, I wonder if him belly I hurt him. I wonder if him a gripe. I wonder if him a tea. I wonder if him a oh, wonder. And you go and you get a children caffeine and you break one little piece and you put in your mouth. And you do a little thing and you do a little thing and you try to work miracle. And mama work miracle. And you come now. Me can't manage mama, you know. Sure. Me wish my mother was another mother. And my mother made a bond with another family. This no man sleep on the kaya we are sleep on. And this tough bag mattress still you can come off. And if mama depend it, go look at work and take off mama off of it before you take off yourself. You know the suffering mother have to go through? Sometimes 3 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the morning, when you make up, wake up and start make cobble nice night nice out. All she can do with a little energy is just spin around and grab you and just push the titty in your mouth. <laughs> Suffering for you. Love your mother. Care for your mother. And God knows if she never gave the titty in her dead. Mothers, square your shoulder. And let me tell you something. If your child don't take care of you and think they're going to take care of them. See that little one there? I know she know, but I, me and Sister William sit her down and tell her. Me know she know. And when me tell her, she said, yes, man, me know. And may I do it. I say, listen. Not because... You're married to my son. You're going to come and live up here, sir. And forget, say, you have one mother. When you get your pay, give your mother something. And I close with this commercial. And many women want to marry to some people's son. And take everything from him. And nothing for him, mother. If his mother did kill him, you would have, you'd have him. If you're sitting at this church and you're married to anybody, you have a, a boyfriend where you shouldn't have, but you have him anyway. And you have to creep everything out and pack it and I pack it up. And in Nagi, mother, nothing, go home, go turn it around. If mother deserves something and feel your mother deserves something, it's a level play field. But some mothers all live of it all, want it all for themselves. How you would like a woman's son to take up your daughter and give her all that she need? And it, it can't go vice versa. But this is a level play field in life. So if you, any woman were married to my sons, 
I go and tell them, me need to get something. I mean, your mother need to get something. And everybody needs something. All if we have it to the house is bridal. Give it to me I, I, my, and your mother unless we give it back. When you come up short. Learn that. And when you get your pay, give your mother something. Amen. And, if, and pay the light bill. If you now pay all I pay half of it. Oh, you think you can have responsibility? You can have to learn that. Huh? And my boys start learning that from a tender age when they start working. And say, God bless him. Eh? When the light bill comes, I don't pay a light bill anymore. That is off my plate. And when the other one was there, you hear mother say to him, say, but me not see they not me come in there. I mean, that's what? <laughs> and the next one, him not, him not work here, but if him work, Lord Jesus put him. You have to say to him, say, hold back something for yourself. Yeah. Hold back something. Oh, pa. Hold back something. Because they were grown that way, brethren, to share with their parents. And when you let them out, they could have got Timbuktu. They must send back something. God bless that little one and he married and lived near to me. And you know what? When they cook, now you see your food that come. You can't hungry. Children love your parents. They have gone the extra mile for you. Your mother, your mother have done it all. So boys and girls in this room, if you think your mother don't love you, think again. Everything and when they talk to you and rough you is out of the goodness of them heart. And then why you become better individuals. Some of you are too small to understand. If you get up and your mother says, brush your teeth and wash your dirty mouth, boy. Go wash your dirty mouth. Your mother don't want you to go out there and make nobody smell your mouth dirty. You go back to the offer. Your mouth not smell bad. Brethren, today is Mother's Day. Mothers, you have done a wonderful job. And if your people don't take care of you, watch them. You, you see casket coming. Because them, them deers are going to shot up on the earth. Them not going to go far. Honor your father and your mother. That it may be well with you. This is the first commandment with promise. That it may be well with you, and thou mayst live long upon the earth. I want all the mothers to come. We'll be praying for you. And I want, if you are here as a child, and your mother is here, come and hug up your mother and kiss her. So if you're inside here, sir, Sister Williams, come. If you're inside here, sir, and you have ten pitney, the ten of them supposed to can't kiss you today. Yeah. 
It's a family of fear, brethren. I believe in family. Where is Sister Williams? Put, the, put it there, man. Just a minute. I don't want you to kiss your sister. If it's your sister, it's your sister. She cannot be your mother. Um, just a minute before you begin, brethren. And I want this to be done in order. And I don't want you to go around kissing anybody's mother. Deal with your mother. Because when you were going through, you're going through. It was your mother. If your children is not here, them just not there. Fair enough? So, you're going to begin. And we're not ruffling your feather. Sister Natasha, I allow your children to kiss you and come hug kiss your mother. Come, come kiss your mother. And, and we begin. Me have two for kiss. Hmm? She might be whole, but she's not cool. But this is how it is. Kiss your mother. Kiss your mother. And, and in turn, all of you kiss your mother. Where's Sister Naveen? Kiss your mother. I never see that. Kiss your mother. We are Shande and Shandale and Shane. You kiss your mother already? Kiss your mother. Kiss your mother. you don't have none. Take me by the hand. Together we will work until he comes. There's no fall. We are walking side by side. As long as there is love, we will stay. Well, you're my brother, you're my sister, so take me by the hand. Together, we will work until he comes. There's no foe that can defeat us. We're walking side by side. As long as there is love, we will stay. Together we will work till it comes. There's no fall. As long as there is love, we will stay. Can you bow your heads? I'll be praying for the mothers. Father, we thank you. We glorify your name. We lift up that most exalted name of yours. Lord, today, I put before you all of our mothers. They are special individuals. 
they have carried us for nine months. Ah, oh God, through thick and thin, the struggles that they undergo to help us to be who we are. So, God, I place them under your control. Provide for them. Open doors for them. Help them before they depart this life to see the fruits of their labor and understand, God, you have come through for them one more time. Mighty God, uh, many of them have labored. And God, as they labor, God, help them, dear God, your children, to give back portions of what you have given to them. So, mighty God, I pray your blessings upon them as they seek to leave grace and truth to their, your spirit, your blood, will guard their hearts and minds. God, I give them to you. I place them into your hands today in your most exalted name. Father, I thank you for the commas today. God, I thank you for an offering we're about to receive just now. I pray you will bless the hands that gives and the hands that doesn't. Ah, oh, God, they will have to supply, dear God, that your kingdom benefits. God, I give it all to you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I'm going to ask you to go back to your seats. Ushers. And as you go back to your seat, mothers, we have something upstairs for you. Everybody. Um, um, praise the Lord, everybody. Um,